so Finally. we can move on uh, to our first article of a, a lot of news to get to this week. Some interesting stuff. This one's from TechRadar.pro or .com. Oh, it says TechRadar.pro <laughs> on the top uh, on the header, but it's TechRadar.com from the people at TechRadar. Dot dot probe. Probe. Dot com. There we go. <laughs> yeah, dot probe. Dot, uh, because dot this is a probe-based article. Uh, Mars Probe running Windows 98 receives software update after two decades. And so this is obviously a probe that went into space a long time ago because if it's at Mars. So Correct. probably went with the latest and greatest. But here's my question. Up until this point, if I had been able to get another device within proximity, could I have hacked this thing? Because I'm sure it wasn't being hacked. <laughs> uh, probably with certainty. So this is a, a probe that was sent up by the European Space Agency. And that was one of the first things I wondered about was like in the U.S., uh, NASA spends a long time vetting software before they send it into space. And so it's well documented. They've got uh, Linux in a number of uh, of our space probes. They use Red Hat on the International Space Station. So I, I hadn't heard of Windows 98 being used on a probe uh, but this one's European, so apparently I hadn't read about it. Uh, but, you know, Windows 98, it has not been supported for quite some time. They never say if it's Windows 98 SE or not. Mm. So this could really be a very early version of it, uh, which means definitely hackable, but it likely doesn't have any network connectivity. So it's designed to uh, basically study planets. I know it was, I think it was Mars that it was studying um, and basically sending back uh, seismic and uh Geograph not geographic, what are the rock data is, uh, so they could study the crust of the planet and all. Geologic, there we go. Yeah. Um, but, but for 19 years, they've had the little alert that says, you need to, to update. Restart your computer. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, but they're like, it'll restart, and we can't do that okay. while it's orbiting. So that, That's a real challenge they had, you know? So they, they were dealing with some storage. They wanted to update some software, and they were able to push that update out over the internet. Now, this is not a Windows 98 update. They were updating their, their software, software running on Windows 98, uh, but it does show how legacy software has a tendency to hang around. And what's interesting is, like, you know how we always talk about, you got to buy this new thing and you got to buy that new thing because the old and busted crap just, like, dies on you after so much time. You can't rely on that. How long has this thing been up in, in Mars? And uh, the spinning disk, I assume, which is installed on, is still spinning, reading yeah. and writing and doing the things that we say that they will die over, and yet here it is, still rocking and rolling. You know, we've got an article later on Adobe, and I saw a comment in one of the forums that was talking about Acrobat Reader that I thought would kind of aligned mm. with this, where they said, Acrobat Reader 5 was 10 megabytes in size, and it read PDFs. Right. Acrobat Reader 21, or whatever the current version is, is over 300 megabytes in size, and it reads PDFs. So, like, functionally, it doesn't really deviate Anything from its original yeah. purpose, but they bolted on all the cloud stuff mm. and the DocuSign and all the other things that are built into Acrobat now. Uh, and that bloat is not necessarily a good thing. Yeah. The, the original version did what it did really well, and that's how these probes are. They're built with, like, the minimum amount of functionality possible, which is why it's kind of surprising they used Windows 98 at all, because right. Windows does not lend itself to being shrunk down. Yeah, does it need a graphical user interface? Does right. it need, you know, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff? And, and even... I mean, because like we said, there's Linux out there. Linux has been around for, I mean, I've heard how long that. ago did this go up? Uh, it said 19 years. 19 years? So, yeah. to 03. Since 03. Oh, so yeah, Linux has been around plenty of that time. Could it, I, I'm, I'm surprised it didn't go that way because when you read about how, oh, we were storing all these files and we don't need that anymore so we can update our software and it can do more and better. It's like, what made you go with Windows at that point in time and not Linux yeah. for the small size and the speed? And well, like Jurassic Park used up. Unix. They did. They they did. Uh, but if you if you were to rewind to 2003, Linux was not where it is today. No. Right. But it was still running a lot of servers at the time, though. I, I, right. I would disagree. I think back back then, you know, BSD had yeah. a bigger presence. Okay. Uh, and yeah. so it was out there. You still had SCO Unix and and, yeah, and yeah. solutions like that that were in use. Um, Solaris was still a thing in 2003. Yeah. But aren't so, you saying yeah. that NASA would have been using Linux at, at that time? I'm not entirely sure if they would have. Because uh, you know, remember, Linux came out in its its current form, 91. like in 1992, 1991. Yeah. Uh, so you're really just over that 10 year mark when you get to 2002, 2003, when this yeah. probe went up. Um, I don't know, and I I think back to like my experience in the IT field back then. Linux was just not wide, widely accepted at that time. Hmm. Yeah, I want, I want to see what kind of computer is on the Voyager probe, because that's the one that went out in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's out. went out there for a hot minute. Yeah. Major. 
<laughs> Vigil, oh, they, yeah. <laughs> they've had to send up new punch cards that, that yeah. chase it down. And you like how I expose the fact that I'm a huge nerd. Like every now and then, they'll say things like Vigil. Yeah, and that, that takes commitment too, because that means you watched Star sure Trek the Motion did. Picture more than once. <laughs> more than once. Yeah, that's a, that's a great to. flick. I, yeah, you know, but the the V'ger twist ending, yeah. which we're ruining for everybody, this forty year old movie. <laughs> yeah. all, all the uh, all the nineteen year olds that are listening are like, "What the hell is this V'ger thing he's talking yeah. about?" Yeah, yeah, it wasn't as shocking as like I see dead people. Yeah, no, it wasn't, <laughs> but it was still good. They should still let good. M Night Shyamalan redo <laughs> Star Trek: The Motion Picture. Yeah, I'm down. They got, they got our, the the people that live in space <laughs> instead of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> This yeah. says the total number of, of words among the six computers is about 32K. It's words. Does that make sense? I don't know what that means. 18-bit. Uh, so words seems like it's a programming thing. Yeah, the, wor- the computer like command system or CCS. Like a double word. It's, it's, a, it's the size of a, of a, um, like a data type. Okay. Right. Yeah, it says it's two 18-bit word interrupt type processors with 40, 96 words each. Of non-volatile plated wire memory. Hmm, this is pretty tight. And right now, it's—I <laughs> mean, it's brushing past your yeah, anus I, I on bet, the way uh, into his yeah. face. I bet Bill Gates has got two middle fingers up right now, going, "Remember that time we like released Windows ninety eight and it blue screened on us? <laughs> Eat that!" <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has stayed online for quite some time. All right. If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.